Dr. Drew, forget about the phone number. It's the best of. Drew? Yeah. Yeah. Just want to make sure you were there. I'm here. Okay. Well, we See, it's hard. You, yeah. you realize it's, it's hard for me because... Shush! I'm, I'm thinking about... Oh. You're, I know you're thinking about comedy and keeping the show moving. I'm, I'm waiting for those medical zingers to come through. Yeah. So well, just, I'm like a loaded gun, just waiting. Yeah. So for me... And you know how comedic I am. Oh, man. Are you right. funny? Right. And so why do you why do you even try? All right. Why forget do you it. Forget Nothing, it. Okay. No, it's all right. Yeah, you see? Okay. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, well, we're going to give you a chance to shine here. Yeah. Via the magic of uh, magnetic tape. And- <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it's magnetic tape. Isn't right. that what we use to do these best ofs? I hope it's... Is it? Oh, who cares? Here's the point. Enjoy some goddamn best of and let us uh, relax. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Anderson, go uh, dig up some blood, sweat, and tears. Come on now. Yeah, we need a little upbeat. It's saying we, we got no upbeat? gas. Yeah. Can we get some other than blood, sweat, and no, tears? No, no, we want blood, we, sweat, and tears. I want to hear some blood, sweat, and tears. I want to hear that. Uh, Brian will go find What's her it. name again? Lucretia Lucre- McEvil. No, yeah. Lou, no, Lou Christie. Lou Christie. Drew didn't know Luke Christie nice. was. There's actually no Luke Christie back there at all. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Uh, Jacqueline? Yes? You're 19? Yes. What's up? Okay, um, I was, um, like halfway diagnosed with, uh, general herpes, or not general herpes, general warts. I know that sounds really dumb, but, um, what? like... They during the examination they said that that's the only thing that they could think it was, but when on my pap I came out negative for oh, it. That's interesting. So you have a possible her her possible warts. Right. And well, what does I that was, mean? Um, that when they diagnosed it, they thought that's what you have, but then they check it and you didn't have it. Well, it didn't show up on my pap, but well, it, the, the, but yeah. when in the visual di- like in the visual exam, that's that's the only thing that the doctor could name huh. them. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Okay. And I was just wondering um, how long, if if someone I was, you know, sleeping with caught them, how long would it take for them to show up? To actually see warts? Yeah. You may never see them. Really? Yeah, guys don't have to have the warts, but they can carry the virus. What? So, are you have a boyfriend right now? Uh, no. Hmm. Girlfriend? <laughs> no. All okay. Right. So uh, what should she do? I'd look at it as not having them. Now, look at it, having them and take the appropriate precautions and realize that he, if you indeed have them, has them. Even though you don't see the warts, he's got it. Okay. So, is that common that they don't show up on the test? No, that's kind of weird. I, I, you need to be retested and maybe some more sophisticated testing I would done. just assume I didn't have them. <laughs> I mean, that's me. I think the vagina is half full. Drew, Drew thinks it's half empty. I think, I think it's half full of warts. You think it's half empty of warts? Half empty of warts. Yeah. All right. Oh, look. Uh, get it retested. Yeah. Yeah? Def- definitely. Yeah. Why wouldn't the doctor retest I it? I think he probably would still have to come back in four months and redo it. He would? Yeah. Why not just do it then? It wouldn't not producing virus? It wouldn't show yeah, then? Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Billy? Billy? <laughs> <laughs> he did the super chicken opening. Yeah. I think that was actually the, the a tape of it, wasn't it? Sounded I, like it. I don't know. It sounded pretty good. I have the Terminator, too. You want it? Yeah. Yeah? Terminated. Right. I'll be back. Hasta la vista. Ah, that's great. <laughs> Anderson, you got some competition in the nerd department, buddy. All right. That's it. <laughs> Such a full moon. <laughs> Billy's done. All right, Billy. That's so That's true, Anderson. It is a full moon. There's a, there was a lunar eclipse tonight, yep, right? Yep. What goes on with that lunar eclipse? What? The Earth gets in the way of the sun shining on the moon. The Earth gets in the way of the sun shining on the moon. That's why we see the moon, because the, 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 lun, the sun lights it up. Yeah, from like behind us or yeah, something? Yeah. And uh, now, because it's daylight, wherever the sun thing is, and we're on the dark side of the Earth, yeah. but we see the moon lit up. Yeah. And then, so we have a crescent moon that's the Earth's shadow in the way yeah, of the moon. Yeah, yeah, And now, what happened tonight? We moved in front of the moon. So now the moon's dark? Yeah. So what? Mm. Half the time you look up, you don't see anything, right? 
Yeah. I right. mean, you look up in the sky at 2 in the morning, you don't see the moon, do you? No. When do you see the moon? You see the moon from when it comes out to about 11 or 12 I or something? I don't know. Let's go find that moon. Do we have, uh, we have blood, sweat, and tears? <laughs> yeah? Put Lucretia McEvil on. Come on. That's my song. Jeremy? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling better yeah. already. Aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Drew had the hernia surgery. He's feeling better. Yeah. Yeah, it's rock and roll, kids. <laughs> This guy, this is back when bands sung about hard-living, hard-loving women who were trouble. And bewitched. That's <laughs> right. And they likened them to devils. Yeah. Shaking, home-breaking. Yeah. Turn that up a little bit. This is a woman, yeah. Got some horns blowing in there. People, uh... Our listeners are like, those dudes ripped off real big fish with the horns. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Lucretia McEvil. Do you have yeah. to sing? Well, let me tell you, these ain't some pissed off kids from Bakersfield with a couple of tats on their neck. These are, uh, these are, these are musicians, everybody. Isn't this where the producer's supposed Ooh. to do like the cutthroat thing and say no more? <laughs> yeah. Her mom was the talk of the sticks. <laughs> yeah, she had trouble. Parents. You see, I Lucretia see. did. Both her parents were trouble. She never did anything worthwhile. This was before she love line, right? her ass. She breaks up relationships. Yeah, it's borderline. Yeah. Uh-oh, the devil. The, the devil is controlling uh, Lucretia McEvil. Ah. Uh. You got fig- to figure with a last name like McEvil. She's, she's in with Lucifer, though, you know? Isn't it weird that we're just beginning to come to the understanding of... What? The people that we think are poor possessed just had a little bit of a character fly. Yeah. They're bad parents. All right, hold chaos. on, hold on. A little Christian here. What you gonna what do? What you gonna do? Woo! Go save the people. <laughs> Honey, where you been all night? Your hair's all messed up. It's a baby. The clothes you're wearing just don't fit your right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, turn it down. In turn, but well, let's have it going. Yeah, we're in the background. Yeah. 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 A little bit loud. A little bit loud. Oh no! Well, just, just, just put it like, like. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's good. Jeremy. Jeremy. Sleeping, huh? See what happens. You can't sleep when Lucretia McEvil's playing. Jeremy. <laughs> or maybe you can. It's been on hold for eighty minutes. All anyway. right. Oh, he's sleeping. Is he I hear snoring? it. Yeah, listen. Turn, hey, turn it down for a second. For a second. <laughs> turn him up. There he is. Yeah. Is that sl- is that snoring or is that uh... sounds like a space shuttle? That's the strangest that's snoring. That's snoring. That's a bizarre snoring. Yeah. It really, it's like the space shuttle trying to trying to steer itself. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Is he awake? Jeremy. No. That's snoring. It, it's in the cadence of a snore. Yeah. Right? Let's try to breathe along. <sighs> it really is afterburners. <laughs> yeah, it should come out faster. All right, hold on a second. Yeah. I've, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. There you go, no, thank you. Good. No greater compliment could be paid to the host of a radio show than to have uh, well, one out of three of the people listening asleep when it gets to them. Not people listening, people calling in, the ones that are excited, yeah, the ones yeah. that are nervous. Yeah, yeah. It's a good time. All right, let's listen to a little trumpet solo here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get, get Charlene on while you're listening. Blow, Daddy. Charlene. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, I had a threesome twice with my boyfriend, and now he's asking for more. Uh, yeah. Well, you know. So is he, like, losing interest, or is he just trying to take advantage of what... Um, You've opened Pandora's he, box. Guy, guys are... He's gaining interest in yeah. threesomes. When guys find something they like, they aren't apt to... Go back r- to the well. Break away, yeah. Listen to that horn. Well, like, I'm used to it, and I like it, and it's fun, but I just don't want it, like, every single day. Not, like, I mean, once a month would be fine. Yeah. Every day. Have you told him that? 
Um, yeah, but he doesn't think he's ash skiing that often. Well, who who's the girl you're having it with? One of them was my waxer, and the other one was um, a friend of his. Your waxer? Yeah. You're having it with a 42-year-old no, Vietnamese was, woman? No, she was like 24, and she was like... She seemed like she had like a good background, like she was clean and she was nice, and she's basically like seen my um, like pussy before. So uh -huh. <laughs> I see. Let me ask uh, what goes on when you get that waxing. Um, she just waxes like inside the lips and like the ass and everywhere. So and, and are you completely naked? Yeah. Well, bottom half, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's, you don't have to you don't have to strip down your bra or anything humiliating like that. You just just spread eagle on the yeah, stirrups exactly. there. And and they, they rip second. that stuff it's, out. It's, I understand that women have to get waxed or want to get I waxed. I mean, what would happen there. if you tried to wax your ass, Adam? Oh my God, it would just tear off. There, there, there's not enough wax. No, no, they'd but, have to they'd have to mine wax from different planets. But let's say they did. They 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 just. Pull your ass off. My ass would come off. <laughs> no, it's like once in a while. No, like when you buy a tomato and you try to pull that ripe sticker off and the skin comes off on it. That'd be your ass. That'd be my ass. <laughs> and let me say this real fast. Uh, how big a tragedy was it when we didn't have a goddamn sticker on every goddamn piece of produce we buy? Yeah. I'm sitting there with my fingernail trying to... Yeah. Trying Pick to off the fidget Fiji the, apple, fidget the sticker off the tomato, and then eventually the skin just breaks off, yeah. and I and I have a, now a, a skin hole in the tomato, and I think, really, a sticker on every tomato? This is what we need, every single one of them. You couldn't just put it on the package of six on the outside. I got to, I got to take a razor blade to my banana. Sounds painful. It does. All right, where is she? Uh, oh, you got rid of her. I didn't get rid of her. She dropped off, looks like. Oh, that bitch. Well, what, what was the question? She was having threesomes. The, the boyfriend, should she continue to let him engage in threesomes or cut him off now before he gets too into it? Yeah. Well, the relationship's not going to survive anyway, no. so she should do whatever she enjoys because this is done for. Are you really, are, are you saying to me, though, when you go to a waxer as a female, you're completely naked from the bottom down and your legs are uh, akimbo? Tara? They're just, you just knees spread out. And they're just c combing through your crack. I mean, that, that <laughs> like, I thought... That, that's a great Blood, Sweat, and Tears song. Combing through <laughs> your crack, babe. Well, you know, yeah. I'm play combing through your crack, <laughs> Anderson. Anderson, play Go Down Gambling. That's my next one, yeah. Uh, Tara, is, he, is that what happens? Yeah, that's what happens. What happens. I I, see, here's what I thought. I thought you put on, like, a thong back bikini or, or something. Or a towel or something that they would expose certain parts. Yeah. yeah, like, well, no, I thought you put, like, a bikini on, and you sort of cinch it in, and oh. they use that as sort of their template. Like, there's their line. Yeah, like, here's course. what you're going to be wearing. <laughs> Holy Christ. She's dumping wax down there. Okay. Tara said she doesn't know. She goes full 70s. I don't know. Full <laughs> 70s. Let's hear, uh, let's hear Go Down Gambling. Yeah. Yeah. It's Jeremy? A, it works with the theme. Was, We're going to just see Jeremy's still, 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 still uh, sleeping. Jer there. It's that same crazy sound. I can't, I can't get past that because it sounds electronic. Yes, it does have electronic sound. But it, it, but it, but it starts off as an exhale, and then cuts abruptly. Yeah, it's weird. Maybe he's wearing a diving helmet or something. Huh. Okay. There we go. Uh, he's done for. Okay, let's talk to uh, Jose. Go down gambling, Anderson. Come on. There we mm -hmm. go. Jose. Hey, what's up, bud? What's up? You're 18. Yes, I am. You into blood, sweat, and tears at all? Uh, not really, dude. I'm more, our, into, I'm more into like a Metallica Slayer deal. Maybe one of our new themes ought to be to play stuff under Loveline. Excuse me? Yeah. Music going under Loveline. Yeah, well, you oh. see if it affects the, the tone of the show. You like Metallica and Slayer, you like blood, sweat, and tears. And sometimes we'll really? put, sometimes we'll put uh, like cla classical music on for me. Yeah. There we go. Uh, that's cool. All right. Respectable. What's happening, Jose? Uh, nothing, dude. I was getting late today, uh, oh, earlier on. No, no, no. Yeah, you remember me last year, aren't you? Are you the one that offered me two thousand dollars for my kid, aren't you? Oh, you have a kid? Yeah, didn't you offer me two thousand uh, dollars? It's now twenty eight hundred dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, it's twenty eight thousand, twenty eight hundred. That was around there, right? All right, please. I'm more, more go down gambling, Anderson. <sighs> Go ahead, Jose, sorry. Uh, no problem, dude. Um, yeah, well, earlier on, I was having sex with my, with my girlfriend, and pretty much, um, 
we were getting it on nice and nice and straight. It was pretty good. Um, and then mm-hmm. about like halfway through it, we we switched, and I don't know, it started to hurt like an M effort down there. Mm-hmm. I mean, bad, dude. Mm-hmm. The skin? Uh, I don't know, man. It happened last year. I, we were we were doing we were Jose. Uh, yeah. The skin hurt. Uh, somewhere below the penis. I don't know, like somewhere down there. It's just it really sucked. Yeah. Ins- yeah it's inside skin. hurt or the skin hurt. No, the skin. The skin. skin. It right. the See, skin how many times you got to ask you that, you retard? The skin. Hey, lay off, Adam. Come on. All right. But he asked you three times. All right. The no. skin started burning. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty bad. Where I'm was the, with that man. Where you know, was like, the, well, what's going on down there? Where is the burning? Uh, right below the... Uh, right below the head, I guess. Yeah, right below the head. The skin started burning. So not not yeah. inside the shaft, but the skin itself started yeah, burning. Yeah, pretty much. Hold on. Could, we got to rock out for a second. Uh, could you see it? it up. Yeah, see, this song's about gambling. Go down gambling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Jose? Is Jose, is there a rash there? Is there anything to see? Uh, I checked that out, dude. Not really, no. Not, nothing. All right, so maybe just sort of too much friction or something. Whatever it was. That happened last year, too, and I, I don't know. I think, I think one of my friends was talking to me about it once, and he told me the same thing happened to him. Like, you know, he was... He was going anywhere with one of his right. and the same thing happened. How about a little lubrication? I don't know, man. Well, here's the deal. If a rash actually develops, make sure somebody looks at it, because that's how herpes gets going. Uh, really? if, it's, if it's just some sort of trauma to the area, then take it easy. Your wife's 16? Uh, something like that. By the way, uh, Drew. Uh, something uh, like my that. My girlfriend's on the, on the patch thing. How long, how long before that thing? Um, how long before I could actually um, have them protect the for that? That's a good question. They're, they're once a week. Uh, usually right. we have people go through a month cycle before you really are unprotected. So I imagine well, it's she's, the same. Been, she's been going with the cycle for about a month and a half. You think it's safe? Oh, yeah, yeah. She was, she it's was fine. On, uh, she was on death. She's safe. Time. No, All it's right. fine. She's fine. Oh, uh, we got we to gotta rock out now a little bit more because it's really, it's really going to kick in here. Let's, let's bring it up now. Yeah. Wish you guys could see Adam rocking back and forth in a chair like this the Rain never Man. Goes, this never goes out of style, does it? Like the freaking Rain Man. Go down gambling. We got to get blood, sweat, and tears on this show, Drew. I told you they're coming to the Cerritos concert hall. We're going. Adam, you like Fishbone? Do I like who? Fishbone. Yeah. There's Reminiscent no, of Fishbone. There's no blood, sweat, and tears. Hey, how about how about when the calls start to go south? I'll just turn it up. Yeah, okay, born, that's that's then. a good that's a good idea. Susan, yes, you're 39. Yes, I am. Go down gambling. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was calling to ask Doctor Drew. I've got degenerative dis- er, degenerative arthritis in my jaw. Yeah. Both joints of my jaw. Yeah. Um, they diagnosed it about three years ago. I basically don't have any cartilage, cartilage right. left. Yeah. And Bad times. Yeah. What's that mean? Well, it's when you have to have knee, knee replacements or anything like that. Um, that's because there's no cartilage in between the cap well, and the bone of the it's knee. It's a right? little more different than the jaw, but keep going. Is that, it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I sometimes it, it locks up. I'll wake up in the morning and I can't open my mouth. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish my wife would get that. I'm on a lot of different medications. Can't and open your mouth. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can't open your mouth. Yes. Because our general arthritis, it locks open. Well, it'll doesn't, lock. doesn't yeah. lock closed. It'll Not unless you're having a muscular spasm of the temporalis muscle, which is a medication side effect. Okay. Well, they do have me in muscle relaxants also because I'm really kind of a high-strung person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, I used to have a lot of high-strung jobs where I was managers of restaurants and so, so you know, things like that. And I was, you know, I'm so nervous. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. I'm crank up the blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> it's all right. That's, that's our parachute now, this blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Just, uh, just there. Call starts going south. There's we your part, crank Adam. Crank up the blood. The cowbell. I play the cowbell. Yeah. Ride a painted pony, let the spinning wheel spin. This could be a new karaoke number for me. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, Susan, right. what's the question exactly? Well, anyway, I'm just wondering if, is there anything I can do? I've heard that there's basically not too much I can do. I'm just going to be in pain the rest of my life. Um, yes, TMJ syndrome. Can, TMJ syndrome is rather chronic, yes. Yeah, they tell me I could do surgery. What's the question? 
Well, I just want to know if, if they tell me if I did surgery, it would be like 60% that it probably wouldn't work. 40 would you mind a reflecting sun? Just let it shine within your mind and show you the colors that are. All right. Basically, my question is, is there anything I can do to fix that so that I can have a normal life and I don't have to be on medications or pain? Uh, That's not your question. Pardon me? You've, you've consulted a million doctors about that. I have. Yeah. No. Okay, I'm not going to tell you anything different than what other people have told you. I'm Riverside. <laughs> what? I didn't say that. Really? Yeah, what, what did you play? Uh, what, euphonium. What, the flugelhorn. <laughs> the what? Euphonium. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a little tuba. Like a handheld tuba. Oh, it's that the thing? The big, yeah. mm-hmm. That thing is only in marching bands, right? You don't um, see that anywhere no, else. it's in concert bands and, like, and English orchestras and stuff like that. What's it called? Euphonium. It's euphonium. also a baritone. All right. And so, uh, what would be your part in Lucretia McEvil? Um, boom, boom. boom. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like we get stuck with the baseline. Yeah, I uh, know. Typically, it's, it's very disappointing. I was <laughs> when I played the trumpet in the seventh grade, and I, we finally got to play some upbeat Neil Diamond song instead of Grand Old Flag. It's real exciting when you uh, you're in band class and you actually on, get to Don, play a song second. that people know of. No, we're done with her. No, your question. That was her question. No, she had a question. She had a question? Yeah, what well, about, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hold on. We're well, going to go to what commercials. What was your question? Okay. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I can't seem to say no to guys. All right. Hold on a second. Okay. All right. That's a good question. Take a quick break. We'll uh, be right back after this. Hello. This is your radio. Radio. Loveline will be right back. Line, everybody. I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Anderson, play the, uh, can we play the end of that last uh, public service announcement Drew and I were just uh, listening to? Can you uh, move that forward? I, I haven't picked on uh, the public service announcements we play on this show in a while, but Drew and I have to sit here and listen to these god-awful disasters every night about people getting shot. <laughs> you know, every... 
every public service announcement is pretty much just this. It's like, it all starts off the same way. Kids on a playground, <laughs> la, 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 and then shotguns. <laughs> I, that, that's what I hear. Like, Drew and I, or, Drew and, or, or Drew and I sit here and talk during the break, <laughs> and you can faintly hear the public service announcements that are just played on a loop for the national feed, and it mm. all sounds the same to me. Like, la, 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 or, la, 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 la. That's a, and when I go to bed, that's all I hear. Just la, la, kids la, la, la. on a playground Ooh, and shotguns. And the yeah. slowing down. Of I'm going to stay out of trouble. No, no, no. I, wait, I like that one, too. Let's hear that one. Because a lot of people, <clears throat> a lot of uh, unfortunate people just get to hear bad local commercials. You know, they don't get to hear these PSAs that we get to hear. We must try. Here it is. Uh, here's the one I, I like. Malik Yoba. Malik Yoba. I play a cop on TV. I wrote this song because I need to see things change. He wrote this Too song because this is the only time anyone street. would play it on the radio. I mean, let's, <laughs> no, let's be I was honest. Shot when I was 15. He got shot at 15. But he, he survived. Still, there are 10 kids that don't. Now, wait a we minute. Do something. He survived? <laughs> I don't know, Drew. You're ruining it for me. I didn't know if he made it or not. <laughs> Malik uh, survived. I like uh, the very end of this. That was my favorite part. There are 10 kids that don't. Mm -hmm. And we can do something if we just try. That's right. Be brave enough to walk away from violence and those that push it. Make a pledge to yourself to turn away from guns as a solution. The controversial part's coming up, Drew. You can find smart, peaceful ways to settle arguments. Here it comes. I survived getting shot, but not everyone does. Not everyone no, does. Really? really? No, nope, evidently he's, not. He survived? He did. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Now, stop that, Anderson. Now you got me confused. Everyone survives being shot, but he didn't? No, he did. He survived being how shot. Could that, how could he be talking to us and have survived being shot? What? what? Yeah, he survived being shot, but then that's when he, got, that's when he lost me. Not everybody <laughs> does. Shocking. But name me one person that's died by being sh I guess... Kennedy, Kennedy, I guess. Yeah. Kennedy. It was always him. But that's Any, it. But that's, that's all I can name. Someone else I can think of. But he did say, not everyone does. Yeah. We're have all the oh, here's my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, play a little of that. Play a little of that one. I don't even know where it is. Come on, that's I want to hear. Clip. I want to. I want to hear the shots at the beginning. Oh, you can't find that one, Anderson. I think I add the shots. <laughs> no, the shots have always been there. <laughs> where have all the children? <laughs> Yeah, that's how I hear that. As soon as I close my eyes, I just hear uh, Malik Yobam uh, <laughs> talking about that. Not everyone surviving and uh, shotguns going off with schoolyards. I uh, play the good one. Play the good one where the where the where the two forty year olds who are uh, sophomores in high school are talking about <laughs> going to a party after the basketball game. Uh -huh. This is still my all time. <laughs> you got to make up your mind because you look. You want me one, and then I find it. And now all right, well, play me. Play me the where of all the children gone with Here's the shooting. Coming. That's my favorite too. <sighs> Every day, 10 and, uh, children are killed by gunfire. Everyone knows our 15-year-old listeners are into <laughs> Peter, Paul, and Mary, too. No shooting yet? You add that? No, the shooting's got to start up. Hey, Anderson added that. He did no, not. There's another one with, with gunshots. Too. Oh, there's another one with gunshots. Uh, that isn't the one. Anderson. Oh. <laughs> I can't just search through this I wish so someone quickly. would shoot Peter, Paul, and Mary. Wait, wait, maybe it's the end here. Stop it. Call 1 800 no, We no. Prevent to find out what you can do. True, we got to start calling one of those numbers to figure out uh, what happened to Malik Yoba, why he survived. <laughs> we should call right now. <laughs> yeah. We should call one of those. Call one of those, Anderson. Let's find out what they can tell us to do. I miss, Mc I miss McGruff, the crime dog, telling us about the laptop computer theft. All right, Anderson, all I need to hear is the 40-year-olds who are going to go to the uh, mixer after the basketball game. This is my favorite one. This is the, uh, they couldn't get actors who were 16, evidently. No. They had to get a bunch of voiceover guys it's in their the late guys, 30s. Yeah, it's the guys who wrote the commercial. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, sure. they, we got to start funding these things a little bit better. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Hey, what are you doing after the game? Hey, oh, there's a big party at Jason's. His parents are out of town and there's going to be plenty to drink. I think yeah. I'll pass. <laughs> You're going to pass so. up a party? Well, it yeah. Sounds more like I got to blow a guy. <laughs> Make the right choice. <laughs> Underage drinking always. Sounds means more trouble. like trouble it's than a dumb, party. Dangerous and illegal. <laughs> yeah. You're going to miss all the fun. I'm going to stay out of trouble. <laughs> 
a public service message from the National That'll Association of Broadcasters. Yeah. That's motivating young people, you see? That's how that works. <clears throat> Who'd they, what, what'd they do? Like, they build a time machine to go back to the 50s so they could write that one? They hammer that thing out on old uh, Smith Corona? I think uh, Mr. Tate wrote that one. <laughs> That's really the do. most ridiculous commercial. Ever. You're trying to talk to, like, an inner city youth in uh, 2003, and you got a couple of dorks going, sounds more like trouble. And by the way, since there's going to be a party there and plenty to drink, Oh, that's trouble. <laughs> what a puss. And by the way... Oh, here it, here is. it is. Yeah. It's my favorite. <laughs> that's ten I... kids die by gunfire every day. Help stop the violence. Never is ten Call kids dying being more people. funny, Drew. Not one more lost life. <laughs> Not one more. Blind, <laughs> Oh, That's one of the dead a ones. Thank you. Message from the station, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime oh, Prevention Coalition. All right, Council. all right, here all we right, go. Back right. to the no, crime. no parties, and let's all stop shooting the babies. All right, there you go. All right. That's what we've learned. All right, and it, if you want more information on how not to shoot kids, you can call that eight hundred number. That's right, they'll help you. Yeah. So, like, what? What? The just uh, retarded parents calls like, hey, I, I got a five-year-old and nine-year-old. I'm thinking about shooting the nine-year-old. It's is that cool or no? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Adam Carolla. You know, I kid a lot on the radio and on television, but cornholing's <laughs> no laughing matter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Daisy? Yes. You're 22? Yes, sir. What's, What's up? up? Um, I'm having a lot of problems here lately. Mm -hmm. um, I've, for about two years, I've been dealing with the medical problems as far as pseudo seizures go. Uh oh. And, um, so you were, you were abused in some way? Yes. Um, okay. It's just now coming out. I didn't have any memories of it before. Mm -hmm. um, I was adopted whenever I was three days old. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, my parents have always been together. But um, my mom, I guess, doesn't know anything about this. About what? About my dad abusing yeah. me whenever I was younger. And when did that end? I remember it all the way up until I left. When did you leave? Um, whenever I was 18. Whenever you were 18? Yes. And, uh... All right. So, it, it was just me, my mom, and dad. I don't have any brothers. <clears throat> Your father sexually abused you from the time you could remember up until the time you were 18. Yes. And, and now you're 22. Right. Well, and the, the, I guess I blocked that out as far as the doctors have told me. The psychiatrist and everything. Well, well the one thing about pseudo-seizures is, is when you've had bad trauma... I sort of think of pseudo seizures as a way people who dissociate experience panic attacks or right. ex intense anxiety. They have these sort of fits. Yeah. And it's just what your brain does when it doesn't have any other way of processing it. And yeah. so you need to, you know, you need a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you talk to your dad? No. And I'm scared of him because I went to a funeral about. A month ago, my grandma died, and I had to go down there to see him. And it's the first time I've seen him in almost two years since I've been going through this. Wh why'd you leave home? Um, Dad was effing her. Well, yeah, well, there you do go. what? Yeah. What, what made you leave home? How'd you get out of this? Um, I started going to college, and he became real abusive mm -hmm. as far as physically. Mm -hmm. And I met my husband now, and oh. Oh. Um, then I moved up to northeastern Oklahoma, <sighs> way away from him. Okay, uh, we're worried about your new husband. Mm. He's great. Really? Yeah. He's really put up with me. We're oh. worried that he could be <laughs> that he could be a perpetrator for your kids, though. We worry you about guys that. don't have any kids, do you? No. Uh, Good. We have no kids. Right, no don't, kids. Don't have kids. No kids. Mm. And we don't want to have kids till later. Yeah, Much wait later. a while. Mom, yeah. When your pseudo seizures stop, think how that right. freak your kids out. <laughs> yeah. Right. When yeah. I quit falling down and yeah. <laughs> hitting my head on crap all the time. All right. Well, listen, you uh, you owe nothing to your dad. You should well, hate him. He's a criminal. Except you should... I know, and I do, and I feel guilty still because no. my mom's still in that house. And my mom, you know... Does she know what happened? I just recently told her, oh. and... What'd she say? Well, she kind of denied it and thought that Shane, my husband, put it in his head. Uh, doesn't, Somehow. uh... Doesn't your mom piss you off for being oh, that yeah. Way? Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. And they adopted you, right? Yes. Good. Screw both of them. Well, I wanted to know, um, is there any way that um, I can, like, do something to my dad as far as, 
like he's real big in the business and banking wow. and a little town here in Oklahoma. He's been named the town, the guy of the town or whatever. Ooh. Damn, see, I never trust yeah. those guys. And uh, <laughs> They always molest. <laughs> You know, I want to yes. bring him down. I want to make it to where none of my cousins, because we have a real tight-knit family. Yeah, well, here's the deal. Don't, don't worry so much about acting out your anger, because that is going to tend to be a sort of unsatisfactory experience for you. I think what you need to focus on is making sure he doesn't victimize anybody else. And so, yeah, you make a report, sure. I don't know if you can prove anything. I don't know if you have a case. Nothing's really been documented, but of course, you, you, you make sure that uh, I, something is recorded about this guy. When you adopt a kid and then pretty much just have sex with the kid from uh, zero to uh, the time the kid goes off to college, are you just adopting this kid so you can have sex with it? I don't know. I, I don't quite understand what goes people like. What, what you know, when you're adopting as a male. Do you, do you then see your new two-month-old and decide, oh, it's a good time to have sex? Or does it, it dawn so, on you? So, like, I why think, are you adopting? I th I'm not sure it really is sexual in the way that adult experience sex. It's sort of con it's confused affection and clo physical closeness and stuff. All it's right. really, you know. So he's a good guy. Yeah. We'll be back. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 my policy is not to talk when Drew's not in the studio when the show starts, but uh, he had the hernia surgery, so I feel bad. Well, now that I've got an emergency at home, I'm probably going to have to leave in a minute here. What do you got going? Just some, something's horrible going on with Douglas right now. Sick? Yep. What kind um, of sick? Just like some sort of horrible rash has taken over, and he's screaming, and it just sounds awful. He's got a temperature? I don't know. I oh, go one of me. Drew's kids is sick. Mm. Well, what do you do? What do you tell uh, your I'm, wife to do? I'm, uh, let me, I'll get home before I go to the hospital. You know? Really? Yeah. But what do you do in the meantime? Hey, well, we thought it was poison oak, but now it's starting to sound like something more serious. So. Well, what could it be? Toxic epidermal ne necrolysis. There's all well, kinds of things you that can be, figure I mean, that out when you get you there, right? It. Yeah, yeah, but I better get going. Well, you're good. Take a couple calls, we'll go. All right. Drew, yeah. you can get out of here. I can? I, I can ride the rest out. Well, because I got... I got uh, what, what song do I got queued up there? It's not really a good song to play now, though. <laughs> well, it's not kind of negative. Stay here. No, but just play the song. It's 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 negative. You want to hear it when I die? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's it's, it's blood, sweat, and tears. Drew, you can listen to it on the ride home. All right, can I do that? Yeah, go ahead. Drew's got to right. take care of his 10-year-old son. Sounds like Sesame Street. Wait, but let me tell you something. There better be something going on with that kid. I know your wife. She's a little nutty. You know what I'm saying? Well, how are you going to feel if there is? Uh, a certain certain feeling of satisfaction, but I will have mixed feelings about it. All right, buddy, take care. I'm not scared of dying. And That's ironic. <laughs> it's kind of a, kind of ironic song, yeah. It's finally funny. It's got the word die, like uh, three words into the thing. All right, let's uh, go talk to Laura here. Uh, bring it down a little bit, Anderson. Laura? Hey, what's going on? Cold way down there, crazy cold <laughs> way down there. What's up, baby doll? You're 21. Yes, I am. I am and right what? in the thick of finals week here at college. Mm -hmm. and I'm getting a little bit of a panic attack. I don't know. It happens mm -hmm. every once in a while, but I get so stressed out. I can't even concentrate when I'm studying, and mm -hmm. I get so nervous. And I know Dr. Drew's talked a lot about when he was in Tell me some of the stuff. symptoms of your panic attack. It's just, um, I just get incredibly nervous. I get a little nauseous. of what would be, like, how my final's going to turn out and that sort of thing, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just makes things difficult. And then the next yeah, well, day, what's like, the worst that could happen if you didn't do well on your finals? I don't know. I'd get below a 3.5. I can't mm -hmm. deal with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that... There ain't no hell. Right. Mm -hmm. Graduating and then having to start over and then having to start over. There ain't no heaven and I pray there ain't no hell. But I'll never know if I'll never know if I... Dying will tell the lie. Dying will tell the All right, all right. Let's bring it down. Laura? Yeah. All right. All right. 
you got to take a. Uh, tell me one more. What? Uh, tell me all your class schedules. What? What classes do you have? Um, this year I have mm-hmm. accounting processes and controls. Uh huh. Explain them all, please. Um. Well, all it's right. a whole bunch of mm-hmm. accounting bullshit. You know. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. annual return of accounting. Yeehaw! Yeah. That's a lot of fun. And uh huh. Good stuff. I see. And uh, what else? Um, then, let's see, I have equity markets and securities, mm-hmm. and that's about it. No, oh, that's about it? Yeah. All right. Well, you sound like you got a full load there. Yeah, just a bit. Mm-hmm. You know, working 40 hours a week, it makes it a little more difficult. But All right. All right, babe. Uh, you know, uh, Drew gets these panic attacks, too. I think he's having one now. Uh, you, need to, uh, you need to take a chill pill. Yeah. I'm no doctor, but I know when someone needs to take a chill pill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. 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 Chill those pill. horns are heating up in a second, Anderson. Let's go, buddy. Chill pill. Bring it up now. Here. Look out, Here it he comes. Here it comes. Chill pill. <laughs> chill pill. <laughs> chill pill. Don't, don't want to go by the devil. Don't want to go by Satan. Don't want to go by Satan. Don't want to die on easy. Just Just let me go go naturally. And when I die. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Drew, if you're listening to this on the way home, please take no no, uh, message from it at all. What's up there, buddy boy? Hey, man. uh, I just want to say you guys. Sorry, Drew's not there to hear this. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Um, There's another band you guys need to check out. Mm hmm. It's uh, it's Chase. Uh huh. The trumpet player is Bill Chase. I think it's the same singer from Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Mm-hmm. Do they sing that uh, Get It On in the Morning song? Get It On in the Morning. Man. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I know them. All you right, well, look. Uh, you got to get Anderson to put that on. Yeah, Anderson is... Uh, this is the gayest barely, music I've ever heard. Barely playing this. Gayest. Yeah. Anderson likes the white stripes and stuff like that because he's cool. He's cool. Yeah, well, that's cool, too. All right. All right, buddy boy. We'll see what we can do with that chase. I'm going to get it going for Sunday. Good deal. All right. All right, let's see. Uh, what's what's next? I'm out of songs. Talk to, uh, yeah, I don't know what song. Yeah, skim through them. Let me see. I could hear Lucretia McEvil one more time before I went home. I got uh, to be brutally honest with you, Anderson. Emily? Yeah? You're 27? Chill pill. Yeah. <laughs> you've, uh, you've been intimate, and uh, what's your problem? I never have been intimate with anyone. You never have? No. Yeah. Well, you got to take a chill pill, baby. You know what I'm saying? Chill pill. <laughs> yeah, what's the matter? You're scared? Your dad left you? You're abandoned. No. Mm-hmm. What happened? Nothing has ever really happened. I mean, I have a lot of guy friends, but... Oh, you've never actually had sex with somebody? I've never even dated anyone. You a big gal? No. Nothing's wrong with you physically? No. Guys ask you out? Yeah. And what do you say? Um, usually I get to know them and they become friends. And Give us the top five reasons why you don't think you've ever been on a date with a guy. And go. I don't really know. I know that if it gets to the point where they want to be more intimate, I, I kind of freak out. Mm-hmm. Backseat Delilah. All right. So, uh... And you, and yet you get along well with your dad. There's no sexual abuse, physical abuse. No. All right. So you really have no excuse, right? No. What do you Chill do? Are, do you get along well with uh, your girlfriends? Yeah. You, you're social. Everyone likes you. Yeah. Right, so next time a guy asks you out, why don't you go with him? Yeah. I, I don't think I can. Why it, not? Because I, it's like if they touch me and. I just don't like it. <laughs> Are you sure someone didn't uh, feel you up, like, maybe even before you could remember it? I don't think so. Well, have you tried any therapy? Well, yeah. All right, try some more therapy. All right? We got to rock out here. What you what gonna, you gonna do? To do? Yeah. Now, this is for Drew on the ride home. And the clothes you wear just don't fit your ride. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you. I used to think that these date lines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the date line and actually met a cool guy. I called the date line and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking.
looking to? 877-889-DATE. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's a love line. Who? But not love line, love line. The best of love line. And, you know, I don't think any more need be said than what you said at the opening of the show. Which was what? Uh, Enjoy the goddamn show and let us rest. That's right. Hey, yo, it's love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew, everybody. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. All right. Let's talk to John. John? Hey, guys. Hey, Johnny. What's going on? Doing well, buddy. That's good. So, you got a question about flavored condoms? Yes, I do. Let me start off by saying, Adam, you are a god. You're the funniest guy I've ever heard in my life. Got to say that. Really? And you've, you've heard a few funny guys in your day, right? I've heard many a funny guy. Canada's a very funny place, you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But no, I've checked out your stuff on uh, with Kimmel and uh, also on Crank Canners. Very funny guy. Well, thank you, I, John. Thank you. Anyways, uh, question about flavored condoms. Through my years of going to nightclubs and raves, I've collected quite... The amount of flavored condoms. Never use them. Mm-hmm. Curious as to whether or not they're safe or not. Uh, my understanding is that you want to stay with the uh, Durex or Trojan. Okay. And that the colors and the flavors and all that stuff that are off sort of brand can be questionable. So right. take particularly the colors. Really? Yeah. And we've been learning on this show recently that there may be something with the polyurethane, too. Though I, I... Uh, But, Drew, what, what about... I mean, if you're going to put condoms out, even if they're sort of novelty condoms, isn't it almost in a way like manufacturing seat belts or something? Like, isn't there certain standards that you have to meet? I, I can't imagine, I mean, with all the restrict- restrictions and limitations and stuff like that, and maybe some of it just, just with the labeling, but it seems like there's a quick lawsuit here if you're just putting out sort of gag condoms right no there's probably some sort of minimum i i don't know i know the consumer reports does reports every so often on it yeah well, and i also know that involved the that testing tr- trojan's been working hard on trying to come out with a, t- a flavored condom like a mint one or something that i heard they're know. coming out with a fluoridated condom it's fluoridated with for, and for and kids mint. a lot yeah. of kids don't get and, enough fluoride and after they get the mint i know you'll be impressed with this adam they're going for pina colada yeah, because <laughs> they want you to be able to experience the entire dental refreshing okay. experience. Okay, now that's it. Now Drew got me going. <laughs> I was already mad at the dentist today because my teeth were hurting. But uh, Drew knows I go insane because every time I go to the dentist and I get that pumice, where they fire up that tool and they do that pumice thing on my teeth, <laughs> little high speed thing going. They bust out. They for me it's novelty. They bust out the pina colada, and I always tell them go 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 get the spearmint or the cinnamon. And they're like, well, we got p- pina colada. And I'm like, uh, I don't like pina colada in, in a crushed rock form. I, I like pina colada, the cocktail. I don't like pina colada, the gritty paste. Y- y- you understand that's where the difference and, is. And you don't really like it in the dentist office. Really? No. What? You, you what? I, I close my eyes and I'm on some exotic beach somewhere far away. No, I'm on some crappy seat and Van Nuys getting beat up on by someone who's getting too much an hour. I told, here's what I tell them. I tell them, listen. They go, uh, people like pina colada. I said, listen, I like pina colada. I like brisket, too. Do you have a brisket pumice you could put in my mouth? How about liver and onion? <laughs> Frankfurter. Frankfurter. Well, it goes on and on. Maybe you have a goulash. I like, I like Hungarian food. Huh. But a little goulash or chicken paprikash. You retard. Here's what you need. You need the toothpaste flavor. That's what you're used to. You know what you scrub your teeth with, Drew? Not a pina colada. Toothpaste. All dentists listen to me. Anything you put in someone's mouth, got to taste like nothing or toothpaste. That is, if you're scrubbing the teeth with it. Very distracting to have it uh, taste like an alcoholic beverage. So don't you have condoms go for pina colada? We need to stay with mint with that, too. They're going for mint. Con- Trojan's going I, for mint. I can go for. I can get down with mint. Yeah, mint I think, is I think fine. Smart. Yeah. Mint. Mint is fine. But yeah, don't, don't, don't go. Uh, or you could ironically go with like a kilbasa. But I, I'm scared people <laughs> would bite. People would bite. 
they would treat the sausage just like it would. They treat they treat oh. it was like a sausage casing. Oh my God! Don't you think people would bite? That is a novelty flavor. Yes, of course. And then imagine, imagine they had kielbasa flavored and buns. Kiel, no, we a uh, little backdoor action. Yeah. Oh God. Dump, dump little, stop it! Stop it! Mustard on there. Oh, now here's 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 would here would be a horrible scenario. Yeah, kielbasa flavored. You put on condom. the kielbasa flavored condom. Yeah. You're heading into the bedroom, but the dog heads you <gasps> off. And, oh. Yeah. That's bad times. Yeah. Mustard flavored spermicide. Uh, oh. Full screener. Brian suggests. All right. So anyway, I'm, I'm done with my. Uh, we've, we've now come up with something though. There's a crank anchors in this, by the way. What? The kielbasa condoms. No. Wendy? Hey, Adam. How are you? You're 23? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I have this problem. I, I've been with my boyfriend for three and a half years, and I, he doesn't really want to have sex as much as he used to, as much as I want to, and it's making me want to stray, and I, I did a couple of times already. But how, <laughs> how often does he want this? Huh? How often does he want to do it? Um, Trick question. Like, Twice a week. And what? You, and what is it you want to do? Uh, like every day. All right. Twice a week's normal. And you say stray. Cheated. Yeah, I know. That's what. But you mean? Well, it, we probably do do it like twice or. Did you have intercourse with week, another guy? I did. Yeah, one twice with one guy, and he's he keeps calling. He's call, called a few times, and I mean I'm nice to him, but I don't really think I want to cheat again. I you just don't. want to know how. How was how how was the sex with the new guy? Well, it wasn't as good as it is with my boyfriend. We yeah. have really great sex, and no. even though the, oh, really? the guy has a bigger dick, it's the guy cheated with. Yeah, it's nice. Your boyfriend's listening right now. He's driving off a suspension bridge. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, he's not listening. Okay. But um, I just want to know. How like, do you know he's not? Do you know where he is? He's. He's in the living room. I'm in my room. Okay. Wow. That's a, that's a, that's a decent-sized huevos, you know? I mean, sometimes people just hear right through the heating vent in and fact, stuff. In fact, it suggests she kind of wants to... Well, be he was on the phone when I called, and and he's, he's on the cell phone all the time, because he's... The thing is that the reason that he doesn't really want to have sex, I think, is because he's stressed out a lot because of his job. He's yeah. trying to start this company. Yeah. And okay. All right. Well, let's just... Uh, Let's backtrack here for a second. Okay. You've been with a guy three and a half years. Mm -hmm. You're having sex, had sex with another guy a couple times. Uh, if the sex had been better with the guy you were cheating with, you probably would have had sex with him again, or at least probably continue. It just sounds but, to me but, like maybe this relationship has run its course. Well, here's my concern, though. It, 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 this is an angry, anger F. This is an F you... Veg vengeance F? Yes. This is, this is someone, she, rather than her saying, honey... Listen, I understand you're starting your business. This isn't working for me right now, but we're gonna, you're going to have to get to the point where you're paying more attention to me. I'll bear down and try to handle this in the meantime. It's, how dare you abandon me? I'm not getting what I need. Screw you. I'm going to go be with someone else. Yeah. Very hostile behavior. No, I mean, I didn't think that I was going to do this. I just, I like to go out dancing with my friends, and one night we did go out, and I saw someone that I knew, and... And I ended up giving him my number. Even you know, I thought we would just we would just talk. And oh, then one I see. night we got totally to, different was, than what I said. Totally different. Yeah, look, I was in a fight as, with my boyfriend. Look, one night it's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> you're in a fight with your boyfriend. I'd so say you're in a fight. Guy. Yeah, I'd say you were even in a fight with him. He said you're not being supportive of him. You don't. You're not empathic of what he's dealing no, with. No, I I have been. It's been going on for like right. a year. Are you are you well, are quite well, down? This is done, are, are you a hot chick? Yeah, I am. I'm yeah. really hot. And guys like yeah. You know, All right, hold on a second. Drew, as usual, yeah. you're uh, wide of the mark here. No, no, it, it's the same thing. As a little each, but here's uh, here's my vibe. This is a hot chick. Hot chicks, if they're a little bit stupid or a little bit insecure, which most of them are, need to have the hot uh, affirmation all the time. Yeah. And the good news is, for them, they can get it all the time. So a hot chick 
who's a young chick, and they basically slow down with this stuff in their later 20s and early 30s, or maybe after they crank out a few kids. But the hot chick, who's 23, who's with a guy who's a little bit wrapped up in starting a business, and they've been together for three years, so it's like he's not bringing her flowers and trying to pound her on the kitchen table every night. He comes home, he's wrapped up, he's stressed out. She's so insecure, she needs to know she's hot all the time. And this guy's only letting her know she's hot twice a week. Yeah, and by the way, though, it's like you got to have a guy wanting to f you in order to feel al- like like you're validated, like you're again, alive. That's that's a personality disorder. Really. All right, I'm with you, Wendy. Okay, well, first of all, I'm not insecure, and I'm not stupid or anything. I'm I'm above average intelligence, and I, I mean, everybody I, says I that okay. everyone's a genius. Well, I just graduated, and I had really great you know evaluations from my teachers and everything. But anyways, graduated um, from. Now she what, did you go to UCSB? No, I went to a different school up here. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> junior college, Santa Barbara no. City College. Yeah. No, I yes. I graduate. I have my BA, but I don't want to mention the school because. All right, it was all right, school. all right. But listen, by by the way, some of the dumbest but, chicks okay. I know went to college. So, true too. He effed his way right through. Them. Okay, well, whatever. I am smart, but um, I. It's uh, not that my my boyfriend like doesn't like tell me that he wants to have sex it's that he does and then he gets me all worked up and then and then we don't have sex you know like he'll he'll like grab my boobs and <laughs> i don't know it's just it, okay. it's very frustrating and uh, i stand corrected I, on the smart part <laughs> i want to know like what can i do to, to okay. get him look to look look that, listen 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 to me he's you guys have been together for a while i mean over three years yeah, but I'm he, a very sexual person. I'm much more so than him. You want to explore her past a little bit? No, no, no. You're you're an insecure person. I'm not insecure. I just love to have sex, and I'm not getting it enough. And, and you're screaming this in the room that he's in. He's in the next room. Well, he, this happened tonight. I mean, we went out to dinner, and and I told him we need to go get some condoms, and he's like, no. He's like, I don't, I don't feel good. But he's what, been what? sick for like two weeks with a cold, and it's not. He, I don't even. All right, feel listen, sick. quiet down. Why do you guys need condoms when you've been having? You've been together for three and a half years. Because I don't want to get pregnant. I was on the pill, and it made me gain weight, and I didn't... Uh, I, I couldn't very, lose it until she's I got very the secure, pill. very secure. Okay, listen, I, Wendy. I, I gained 30 pounds. 30 pounds? And then pounds. when I got off the pill and I started exercising, I finally lost it, so... 30 pounds? Okay, listen. Yeah. Well, she, she wasn't exercising it. Listen, Wendy, break up. You've been together for too long. You're angry. You're cheating. He's not making you feel uh, like a queen. Break up. That's it. Mm. Uh, he's he's he here. Let me explain something. How old is he? He's twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. When a guy's twenty-seven, it becomes extremely important to him that he get his career, his yep. business, his finances off the ground. Yep. The the days of pumping away willy nilly are uh, behind him. Yeah. I mean, you, you're still horny, but you're start. You're hearing the clock tick. You're getting near thirty, and you got nothing going on. Yep. You don't want to be renting your whole life. Guys get focused on this. Yeah. Uh, you're 23 and you're focused on guys desiring you. When he's got, I, I agree, maybe not a horrible person, but has some personality difficulties. Yes. Once it just abuse a guy. And think about it. The guy's in the next room and she's screaming like, I don't care if he hears me. This is my she's point. Angry. Is she, she's acting out in ways that are extremely hurtful to him and has no sense of empathy or even concern for how this yes. how affects her. She's a, she's a hot-looking sociopath. <laughs> Break up with him and do him a favor, please. Megan? Yeah? You're 18? Yes. What's up? Well, I just wanted to say I love your show. Thanks. And um, I called about a year and a half ago. And you guys told me to get the hell out of my house, and I did a week ago to the hour. Wow. Wow. And um, it was a bad move. I uh, left in the middle of the night, and um, I packed up all the necessaries. And um, my parents still have not heard from me, have no idea where I'm at or anything. It was a bad move. Well, it was a good move. Bad move out. Bad circumstance. I see. I see. So you never understand that. No, I didn't understand that. But um, they... uh, I'm not really sure how to go about. Trash. You don't know inflection. That's your problem. You like sorry, uh, you like Jaime the robot. All oh. right, so go ahead, Megan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's your fault. <laughs> but um, yeah, I uh, I'm kind of confused as to when I should contact them and what I should do because they're pretty psychotic. All right, and, where are you living now? Um, I'm staying with a married couple f- uh, 
fr- uh, friends of mine, and um, she had gone through the same thing. What is it you've been going through? Uh, well, they're overly controlling, and um, they're just they're just weirdos. I mean, like, I've never been allowed to have a job, and um, I was homeschooled, and the homeschooling didn't go bad because I made sure I socialized and everything, but I had to lie a lot to in order to actually do normal things. How did you, how did you make sure you socialized a lot when they were so controlling? Well, um, like, when I got a hold of my license and started driving and stuff, I, um, I would visit with friends and stuff. Okay, so what they, are, what they were are controlling. Are they religious? No, um, they're just they're just huge control freaks. They were like that with my brother and. Okay. When you say you did normal things, what does that did that mean? Pardon? What did that mean when you said you did normal things? Um, well, I was involved in 4-H and I played piano and I did ballet and. No, you said I did. I I was able to do normal things That's... when I socialized. What you... Oh yeah, I just hang out with friends and. Well, what are you getting at? I'm for? wondering whether normal things included doing drugs and having sex, and that may be what freaked the parents. Oh out. no, that's not. I mean, like, well, I will not deny that I have involved myself in those activities, but that's not really what I usually do. With will my not mind. deny that I have involved myself in those activities. <laughs> Sorry, no. I'm. I live in I France. Be an Englishman. Uh, all right. Well, wait a minute, Miss Conehead. <laughs> is is did, did your parents find out? Um, well, they did uh, find out a little bit about it, but the thing is, my dad's a pothead, and so Ooh. when he, they found a little bit of pot in my room, they totally flipped. Your dad was pissed for, for Bogarten, right? Huh? You are holding. Bogarting his pot. No. I no, don't know. Okay. My English Bogarten doesn't English mean made. anything <laughs> anymore. All right, so listen, Megan. Yeah. Uh, I believe you that you're sane. Okay. And, and I cool. believe you that your parents are uh, head cases. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'll take your word for it. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. No, really, so seriously. What? Okay, here's the deal. Doctor, You're 18 years old. Yeah. You, you can be out of the house if you want to be out of the house. Right. Now, the question is, is what about you getting a job and getting your life going? Well, that is what I'm working on right now, and um, I want to, I have every intention of doing that. I have to uh, get a car and all that good stuff, but um, my you, friends are really helping what, me. What are you doing for money? Um, well, right now they won't accept rent or anything, so I do have a little bit of over $400 to my name, and I should have an extra $400, but my mom had a joint bank account with me, and I can't access the money. Your dad tried to smoke it. It's a joint account. <laughs> yeah. Joint, yes. Yeah. That's good money. Okay, listen. Uh, call your parents so they don't call the cops. Well, no, they're no, they're not going to do that because uh, they would get in trouble. I think they probably had a bong fund. Too. Right, because they they got what do they do? Because your dad like sells weed or something. Well, we got all the family secrets, but like if they ever got the police involved, it'd be pretty bad. Like what? Oh, oh, you got molested. Oh no, no, no. What are the family secrets? What happened? What do you do? Um, I'm really not comfortable talking about it. Just well, your dad's your dad deals. Um, yes. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, I just okay. said your dad's selling weed. I said he grows. Or yeah, he dad grows. grows. No, he grows. Yeah, he's he got a. Smokes it. He's a pothead. Yeah, well, there's, only, there's two he, possibilities. He smokes. He smokes his own harvest. He's yeah. got a hydroponic <laughs> farm. Yeah. In the basement. Either he's growing pot or he's keeping like. Uh, uh, somebody held prisoner in your basement. So go, go ahead with the pot. That, that's fine. Yeah. Cable, you know, they don't pay for cable and all that good stuff, too. Yeah, all right. Oh, they're, no. they're dynamite people. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, look. Call them. Tell them uh, I'm out of the house. I'm fine. I'm safe. I'll check in with you uh, in another week and hang up. All right? You think I should call soon? or do you Yes. Th- call soon. Yeah, I think you owe them that. Call soon. Tell them you're safe. Tell them you're fine. Tell them not to worry. Tell them you'll call them later. And get and a that's job. It. And get a job and fight to keep it and move out and uh, out of your friend's house and all that. Eventually, something's where I, I don't trust these friends too much. Mm-mm. The guy's going to try to have sex with her. Oh, yes. See Tonight. She doesn't sound very good looking, though. Megan? Yeah. Are you, are you attractive? Um, yeah. You are? Yes. All right. Yeah. Don't seriously. Don't worry about my friends. They're good people, um, and uh, my friend, the girl, she was in a very similar family situation, and yeah. that's why they took me in. Yeah. Uh, how about? Uh, do they drink? Uh, she doesn't. She's diabetic, but yeah. um, he does every now and then. Yeah. Be, be careful. Be prepared to see a silhouette, silhouette of him and a bud tall boy. Yeah. Just in the doorway <laughs> tonight. Yes. Just uh, you'll see his boner Make, off to his <laughs> right. You see the can in his left hand. Megan, this is no BS. you, you got to be careful. Where are you oh, sleep? I, I understand that could happen, but uh, I, I wouldn't allow it to anyway. That's uh, a good girl. Uh, 
You take a corn cob off, you break it off in your coos before you go to bed, all right? <laughs> okay. All right. Not just your coos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Megan? Yes. Uh, I'm going to need you to use the other half of the corn cob uh, in the uh, corn hole. Uh, okay? Oh. Drew pointed that out. Not really down with that. Yeah, but he may be. Yeah, I'm, you're I'm, right. I'm looking at I, Okay. I'm, I'm very... Here, here's my thing. I'm very conservative that way. I, drive, I play it safe. And she's <laughs> I drive. I drive at 55. And she usually with a Super Bowl in her mouth. I always keep the deadbolt locked on the front door. I keep the hands at 10 and 2, and I sleep with a corn cob up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're late. We got to take a break. We'll be back. If you need help, hang up and then dial, dial. Love line. One eight hundred love one nine one. Love line will be right back. Hey, yo, it's Loveline. <clears throat> I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right, let's uh, get back to the phones and uh, speak to Josh, who's 20. Oh. Josh, mm. you don't want yeah. to talk to Josh? All right, we will. All right, what's up? Uh, yeah, I flipped candy this weekend, and I've had a really bad migraine for the last four days now, I guess. Is that slipping or flipping? Flip. Slip. And that's yeah, uh, the, Coke, the Coke and, and ecstasy. Those candy flipping. That's what I thought that, it was, too. Or candy flipping, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, didn't I say that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Just headache? Yeah, just my... It feels like a concussion, almost. What do you do? You you, you take... How do you do it? You snort uh, I I snorted some Coke, and then I did some ecstasy, and then I snorted some more Coke. Was it a big dose of ecstasy? Uh, no, it was just a, it was just one cup. Uh, it was and a single did, hit. Did you have any sort of unusual reaction when you were high? No, not really. I mean, I didn't feel the ecstasy as much as I normally do. But how much is the coke these days? Uh, I, did, I got like an eight ball for like a hundred. Eight ball for a hundred? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <I> just, <laughs> Wait a minute, is that like three and a half grams? Mm, yeah, I think so. Something like that. So uh, you paid like uh, thirty bucks a gram or uh, twenty eight bucks a gram? Yeah, but he threw in ecstasy for free. So wow, coke is so cheap now. Well, listen, when I'm uh, elected governor, uh, eight balls, uh, eight balls will be uh, one hundred and fifty dollars. One of my policies, yeah. Cocaine price controls. I mean, really, is is, is coke is? Well, I mean, eight balls is a little cheaper, but is coke thirty? 30 bucks a gram? That's how much I got it for. Wow. <clears throat> I'll tell you. The kids today, Drew. I don't yeah, do so a good, lot of coke. I haven't bought a lot of that. How many days? How, when was this that you did this? Four days uh, ago? Last weekend. Last weekend. And headache ever since. And it's a global headache. Yeah. It's, through a, it's not one yeah, side or the other. Yeah, mostly like in the back of my neck and in the front yeah. of my head. All right. Does it get into low back at all? Low back? Um, my back sore. My whole body really sore because I did it all weekend. But Oh, you did multiple times. Well, I did coke, coke multiple times, but... Anything else you're doing besides cocaine? Uh, just coke and ecstasy. That's it? No no pot, alcohol? Uh, pot, yeah, off the lines. Doing any other... What's the pills you're shaking? What was that? Sounds like you're shaking a bottle of pills. Uh, I did coke a little bit ago. <laughs> Josh, sounds like you're uh, well on your way to hell here. Yeah, the cocaine, yeah. the co daily, it wasn't that you did cocaine four days ago, as you added ecstasy four days ago to the cocaine. So you're, yeah, you're, strung, you're, you're strung out on coke, so that's where the headache's coming from. And it could be your sinuses, it could be a lot of different things, but it's the cocaine. So it could what be you, just because if I don't do it, nah, or whatever, just because I've done it all weekend and I'm kind of like strung out, I guess. Yeah, so you're, uh, you're strung over, yeah. yeah, strung yeah. Out. What do you, uh, where do you get your money? I work. I have a well, you, pretty good job. You got a good job? Yeah. I do. It's okay. I'm a collector. <laughs> really? You collect drugs? Uh, no, money from bills and crap. <laughs> I see. All right. Hey, Josh. Wow. Maybe yeah. you might want to look into your uh, cocaine use. Yeah, you just yeah. need treatment, Josh. And uh, this kind of thing actually was kind of thing we'd recommend you have treated in a hospital. I know it's hard to get that these days for cocaine, but... Uh, yeah. Really? You're, yeah, cocaine, they don't like to treat. You can't, you can't stop doing coke? I can stop. I just... Just don't want it. I don't know. I just have it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, see, I can stop. Just well, not now, stopping. Now you, now you have a headache. You've had bad experience. Why don't you just stop then, if you can stop? Yeah. 
The staying stopped from cocaine is really hard, and if the first week or so is extremely ability and irritability. How, yeah, I guess I, it does kind of seem hard to find one right now, you know, I guess. Yeah, get, get, get treatment, right? It, it's, okay. Again, insurance companies don't like paying for inpatient treatment for cocaine because they say there's no detox. But if you don't put people like this in a structured environment, they don't stop. So people don't detox from coke, so they're not going to put them in a hospital. But if you don't put them in a hospital, they're they never going to quit. Right. Which, doesn't that end up costing the insurance company more over the t course of time because of people Adam, have to relapse? When you're governor, we're going to have a long talk about this. Oh. It's one of the biggest travesties out there. Really? All right, we're going to give money. All right, I, I got a lot of plans. We got, you got to go for this governorship. We, we need it. And here's it's time. You've been talking about this for years. It's, it's time to, it's time to consensual out. crimes, legal, by the yeah, way. Yeah. And all the prostitution, all that stuff, no problem. Knock yourselves out. We're, here's what we're doing. Taking all the cops... Violent crime. Even white-collar crime. Go ahead. You want to skim some money at work? Go right ahead. Marjorie? Yes? You're 21? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I don't know. Like, for the past three years, I've been, like, I don't know, trying to experiment with intimacy and everything. But I, like, never get turned on. Even if the guy's, like, really turned on, I'm just not. Are you on any medication? No. So not so sexual. It's just you don't really like sex. Well, I would imagine that I would. I'm a like very passionate person, and I don't. Bruce, a man of exquisite passion himself. Perhaps you two should get together. Does anything anything turn you on? Yeah. Um, just not when you're with a person. Yeah, just not when I'm with a guy. Mm -hmm. Well, what kinds of things get you aroused? I don't know. It'll be like unintentional things, like. Um, I don't know, like, you know how you see the intimate parts of a movie, that'll do it, or just have a really vivid imagination, sometimes that'll do it, but when I'm with a guy, it just, have I Have you just not I been in love? Turned on. You've no. not been in love with a guy? Am I in love? No. You, have you ever been? No. I think that may be the miss... Oh. oh. <laughs> do I, have to, I, don't, I shouldn't have to be... I didn't think hold I on to a second. I mean, hold on, hold on, Marjorie, okay. hold on. Smoke detector battery went off in the background. I have it clocked in at about uh, 108, 109. Okay. So we should be looking for that 53. thing to go off. Was every 35? They're about somewhere between 35 and 55 seconds. So around 43, she's got to be quiet again. Okay. She lives in L.A. Can't, can't. It sounds like her phone's right next to it, too. Here we go. I can't really hear you. Okay, just be quiet for a second. Okay. Hold on. There no? we go. Okay, that was at forty-seven. Okay, hold on. Let me let me let me what, triangulate what, what here. What room are you in? Forty-seven off there. My bedroom. Your bedroom. Yeah. She okay. sleeps with this, Adam. I want you to think about that. All right. She, oh, she, <laughs> when I'm in charge, but Marjorie. Be be, <laughs> be sympathetic. She can't get aroused. The engine isn't running. Mm -hmm. She probably doesn't even hear this. Seven is uh, thirteen seconds. So we're probably coming in about uh, twenty-five. For the next go around. Fresh, uh, I think it's about eighteen. So hold on here. All right, hold on, Marjorie. Marjorie, be okay. quiet for one minute, okay? Okay. okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, see, 20. 23. That's 23. <sighs> 23, so hold on. I had it at uh, 47. I went off at... It's going to be uh, 50. 20, well, hold on. What's 23 and 47? Uh, 23 and 47. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Less. What's 13 and uh, 23? 36. 36? We passed that. It's going to be about 56. No, it's coming. Okay, quiet. That was at 36. Uh, 30. Here we go, 50. Th 59. 54. 59. Oh, 59, you son of a bitch. What I told you. At? I'm seeing 56. I'm looking at the uh, clock right well, I'm there. I'm looking at this one up here. We're looking at two different clocks. We're off by a few seconds. Okay. We, right. <laughs> true. This is an outrage. So, what did I say? 39 seconds? What do I want? Why don't you question Marjorie a little bit about her uh, living environment? <laughs> okay. But how many seconds did I have? 39 on the extrapolation there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So are we going off on, on 38 here? Yeah. And right, we're looking at the clock. We're uh, trying to time the smoke detector if anyone's just tuned in. All right. Uh, five. Oh. Okay. So it's 35. It's 35. 35? 35, yeah. 36, 36, 36, 36, 36 seconds. Yeah, 36. Oh, that's what I said the first yes, time. Yes, yes, you did. All right. 36 seconds. Now, Marjorie. Yes. Yeah. That, uh, when did it go off on the uh, last uh, one? 35. I went off on 35. 
All right, so uh, four eleven. Yeah, should do. It. Okay, you uh, live in a room that has a smoke detector that goes off every thirty six seconds. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Are you in your bedroom right now? Yeah. Okay. Just just for a second, listen to the ambient noise in your room right now. Mm-hmm. Do you hear that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, how long has that been going off that way? For quite a while, but I just get used to it, so I don't really hear it anymore. All right. Do you, do you, do you, do you understand that would drive an iguana nuts if it was in a so you want me cage to in the room? room? No, no, no. That's what killed your trip. No, oh. no. No, now where, where is your bed in relation to the smoke detector? Um, like two feet from right underneath it. And, and this, has been, uh, this has been happening for weeks now, yes? Months. Yeah, for like... Oh, there it is. Yeah, for like a year. <gasps> oh, really? A wow. year? That but, is a yeah. record of some time. Hold on. Let me talk to Drew for a second. Wow. I am impressed. First off, how low can the battery go <laughs> that it can give the low battery detection for four years? Uh, we like Marjorie, and uh, we, would, we would like you to replace that 9-volt battery with uh, a new one, all right? I'll do it this weekend. Oh, please. Uh, and you know how you can tell if it's got juice in it? You put it on your tongue. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't want to do that. Okay, so you got to fall in love, Marjorie. Yeah, you, you do. You need a guy you like. And we, we've known, we've, that's been our experience with not every but many women. That for, in order to hook up with their sexuality, they need to be having an experience of sort of genuine intimacy, really. I don't, I just, I don't fall for guys like that. I mean, you know, I care for them, but I just can't really, I don't know, like... Mm-hmm. We, we get that. We get you're having trouble with intimacy, but that seems to be the missing ingredient here, we suspect. To fall in love. Yeah, we suspect that. All right. So, don't beat yourself up. Don't rush yourself. Don't freak yourself out. Just uh, find a guy, get in a good, steady, monogamous relationship, mm-hmm. and you'll find your orgasm. Okay. All right? Okay. All right, now don't hang up yet. Okay. I do. Five, four, three, two, <laughs> Ooh, good job. one. Thank you. All right. Now th- th- this one is of how- our greatest pastimes. My it's my greatest love in that- this show is timing people's low battery. Do we ever miss them? Though chirp. we hear them, they could be three blocks away. We hear it. <laughs> um, imagine sleeping in a room with that over your head, chirping. I mean, that was through the phone, and it was very audible. Uh, yeah, distracting. But it's, it's interesting how different the range of human brain function is. Yes. She, she has the capacity... Some brain, no brain. No. <laughs> yes. She has the capacity to screen things out, and you have no capacity to screen things out. I mean, yes. and, and I don't know that I can put a judgment or qual- you know, qualify but one or the other. If I could, you'd be first on the list of things screened out. No, I understand that. Okay. But you know what I mean? That some people can screen everything and then focus. Yeah. It helps you focus when you can screen stuff out. Yeah. It does. Fo- focus on watching soaps. Well, and not everyone's focusing on the right things. But, All right. But your thing is, you, you, you know, like you said, of flea farts and you're... you're no, you're, but I think so. that's what makes me a genius. Yeah. That's Thank what makes you... you. And you know what it is? It makes, it makes you see... All changes in the environment, you know what I mean? Things that are inconsistent, the rest of us sort of screen out, you see it and it bothers you. Yes, everything bothers me. Yeah. <laughs> but I am amused by the smoke detector. All right, all right we're going to take a... Uh, I have no idea what Marjorie's question was, I just had to time. And then it becomes very important to me that I'm able to time the chirp. And, the, and that was 36 seconds. The average runs over 30 and yeah. about under 45 or 50. Uh, 50. The yeah. average under chirp... to 50 is really the range. Average chirp is a somewhere in the mid forties or low forties. Would you say, Drew? Actually, I think I think there's sort of two clusters. One is around fifty, and one's around thirty-five. Yeah. So her her chirp is going off. Let me just do some crazy <laughs> math here. How many times a day? Her chirp is going off approximately two times a minute. Okay. One hundred twenty times an hour. Well, it's a little bit less. Let's just so say hundred times an hour. Let's just let's be forgiving because it's more than a hundred times. Yeah. A hundred times. Just an a hour. round down. Hundred times an hour. So it goes off about eight hundred times in our average sleep. Twenty four hundred times a day. <laughs> yeah, but she's not in her room twenty four hours a day. Eight hundred times while she's there. That's right. All right, we'll be back. <laughs>
one eight hundred love one nine one. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Loveline. I'm Dr. Drew. Adam just getting his coffee. Mm-hmm. Oh, I gotta sing. Yeah, sing, man. My kids are. Where are we? No, Drew, you weren't ready. Go. Da zoom, wazi, wazoom zoom z. Yeah. Hey, it's Loveline, everybody. Sorry, I'm late. Our uh, new uh, engineer Michelle said 15 seconds, and that was about eight seconds. <laughs> no, she said a minute and a half. Then four seconds later, said 15 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, what's up with that? You said a minute and a half when I went to go get my coffee, and, and 30 seconds later, you said 15 seconds. Oh, the timer's uh, off. All right. Just as long as I'm not going insane. I need to know uh, what uh, what's in my refrigerator that a tarantula will eat before the night is over. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Uh, Andrew. Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's up? Uh, I got a girlfriend that just recently moved back to Kentucky and I live in southern Illinois and I'm 16 she's 15 and I was just wondering if my mom was right and we should break up until you know next year but to me that's stupid you going to hi- you going to high school yeah I'll be a junior what? she's going where now uh, she's, she's going to stay in Illinois and you're going to go to Kentucky she yeah she's in Kentucky why, why does this, I find this confusing? It's confusing because Andrew's either stoned or stupid. She's, in she's ca- moving away? Yeah. Andrew? She lives with her mom. Her dad is here in Illinois. Hold on a second. I, I think we're having difficulty with our phone line or yeah. something tonight, which is people aren't responding because uh, I think they are responding. We can't hear them, and yeah. it's driving us insane. Yeah. Okay, she lives in Kentucky. He, he's, her dad lives in Illinois. That's how he met her. She's going back to Kentucky where her mom lives. Right. Well, but bottom line is is they're in high school. And they live She's a, 15. a long way apart. She's going to be in Kentucky. Yeah. He's in Illinois. Yeah. How far away is that, Drew? It depends what part of Illinois. But be, be that as that's the, that's the reverse of the Abraham Lincoln uh, migration. Be that as it may. <laughs> migration. Andrew. Yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, your mom's right. It's a bad idea to try to maintain a relationship in high school at that kind of distance. It never works. Oh, she is coming down this weekend, to, or coming up this weekend to see me, and all, and you know, weekend. She's coming out this yeah. weekend, and and then she's going back to Kentucky, right? Yeah, her mom and, said that she can come up and see me. I mean, uh, her, okay. her her parents are cool with us going out. Yeah. Well, her parents are cool with... Yeah, Drew, you'd be cool with your daughter going out with a guy who lived out of state, wouldn't you? Very cool. You never have to see him, right? It'd be greater if he lived in a different country. Yep. You're just leaving. Honey, uh, don't forget your carry-on bag and your chastity belt. And you just send her on a plane, right? No. Hey, uh, Andrew? Yeah. Okay, so uh, here's what's going to happen. You're going to you're gonna get involved with her. She's going to come out this weekend. You're going to have a great time. Then the school year is going to start. She's going to go back to Kentucky, and you both are going to have horrible high school experiences. experiences because you weren't around your significant other. Right. True. You need to let this break up. It's a natural course of it's, things. It's not going to work, though, if she's coming out this weekend, and mm-hmm. we're not going to talk Andrew out of it. Yeah, so listen, Andrew. Not. Yeah. Don't get her pregnant. No, I won't. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. All right. All right. Uh, about that tarantula? Yeah. I just experiment with it. See what you can do. Okay. Can oh, Drew. Do. Hold on. Andrew, Where's that scratch on. pad? Whoa, whoa. Drew. Oh, I, I got to record that. Put it put on tape. Put on yeah. wheel. <clears throat> yeah. Let's get that. Uh, hold on. Now, slow down. Slow down, Andrew. And, Drew, don't ever take the pen away because sometimes these pearls come flying right. out. I'm, I'm not so sorry. poised. I'm sorry. Andrew. Yeah. You're saying, see what I can do? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Got All it. right. Got it. What else do you know? Do you know about transmissions, uh, literature? Framing? What else do you know? Well, I did take auto mechanics last year, so. You did. Uh, you did. Okay. Yeah. So I should see what I should can do about the car, too? Uh, yeah. Just see what you can do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, see what I can do. We had another one say, uh, I can't remember what the other whatever. one was. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> we got whatever and see what I can do. All right, there you let's go. Uh, let's talk to Betty. Betty, hey, you're 21. Yes. 
There's nobody under 80 named Betty. I know. I lied about my name. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, Here's all the important well with thing. The universe. Yeah. Don't don't pick a name like a Beatrice or something. It's going to confuse <laughs> us. If I hear a name that's meant for a corpse Gertrude. on a twenty-one-year-old <laughs> or Gertrude or, or Millicent, if I hear Millicent, Gertrude, or Beatrice or Betty, is Betty but, short for Beatrice? No. No. Should I just be Jessica? That'd yeah, be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be okay. good. Or Brittany. Brittany'd be good too. Brittany. Okay, I'm Brittany. All, All right, right, Brittany. What's up? Um, my boyfriend and I just started having sex. It's my first time, and it's fine if we don't use a condom. If we use a condom, it hurts a lot, and I bleed. Yeah, no no way. With the Betty, it would have been too disconcerting. Right. I couldn't have answered this call. Yeah. That's much better. Yeah. Um, with the <laughs> condom, uh, yeah. you never have any bleeding when you don't use a condom? Right. How many times have you used a condom? Four or five. And how often do you guys have sex? Um, we've been dating for about four weeks now. We only see each other on the weekends, so. So, okay, do we, we got to do the math on how many, everything? How many, how many the math? We probably did it about 15 times, 10, 15 yeah. times. So almost half of them have been with a condom. Yeah. It's possible you just bleed with sexual activity, and it's just coincidentally falling on the days when you've used the condom. Why did you, use the, why did you not use a condom? When you didn't use them, what were you thinking? I hope I don't get pregnant. And when you did use them, were you closer to your period, or was there any other time, anything about it that it, led you to use was, a condom? We started right after I, like, finished my period. But, I mean, we've, it's been a couple weeks now, so, like, we tried it last weekend, and I still bled. Uh, okay, well, let me ask some questions. Is there discomfort with the condom? You feel like yeah. you're not lubricating as well? It hurts, yeah. Okay. Could be that uh, extra micron of width, which uh, is that 30% increase in girth for me. Um, why don't you uh, try uh, using some lubricant with the condom? Okay. Oh, okay, Sorry. Mr. Corolla. Sorry. Okay. What do you want me to go to there? Stretch your coos out? What's your no. plan? Uh, no, I just... You got to use, you got to, uh, either you got to use lubricant with the condom. Okay. Or... You should just get on the pill. I mean, you guys are uh, having a relationship, right? Yeah. Well, what about getting on some birth control? Um, I have to wait till I get back to school because my health insurance is through my university. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to be back in August. Uh, what is the pill? Isn't that like 30 bucks a month or Not something? Roughly, yeah. Yeah, at mm -hmm. most. Can you get yourself fired up? Can float a couple of months for that? Yeah. 30 bucks? I could. I could. I was All right. Why don't you do that? Okay. I'll go to yeah. Planned Parenthood, get it for next to nothing. But, but yeah. be that as may, I still am not convinced the condom is doing anything here. The bleed, bleeding comes from the uterus. It's not from the vagina. It's not like she rubs herself till she bleeds. Mm -hmm. The bleeding comes from unstable lining, typically in the uterus, or some irritation of the mouth or the cervix. And it just doesn't make sense to me the condom would cause The that. cervix has a mouth? Has a mouth. So like it's a, like I'm getting oral when I'm having sex? Your pe yeah, that's right. Wow. Yeah. Whoa, just dude. Tip. Just the tip, dude. Oh, man. Now I'm into it again. To say. Yeah. Hey, uh, I saw this commercial uh, see this? last night. Yeah. The... Drew, Drew is it, 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 do I have to explain everything yeah. on this show, or do you want to do anything? I, I'm showing Adam pictures of a uterus, and this is the service. In a book, in, in a an book. anatomy book. That's right, and this, this canal here is the mouth. How far is this area? Could I reach this with my penis? You? Oh, am I going this way? No, you're, this is where your penis goes in. I'm going up the bottom hole? Yeah. And how far, how far is this distance here? Uh, and why don't they make these things to scale? This is just about to scale. That is to scale? Mm, Seems a little, little small. small. Yeah, it's a little small. This yeah. is like when I'm getting like an 11-year-old. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I like 17-year-olds. How big this would that should, be? This should be actually about four or five inches there. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Uh, might as well be in Canada. Yeah. All right. Uh, where are we, Drew? Oh, so I saw a commercial last night for the new birth control patch. Yeah. And the commercial, <laughs> it's kind of well, weird. It's kickboxing? like... Kickboxing? No, no. That's that's for the herpes oh, medication. That's right. That's right. Um, usually, it's like, I understand, like, like burger commercials are made to make you hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And food commercials make you hungry. Yeah. And the... The birth control commercial, I think, is made to make people horny. <laughs> because, have you seen the commercial? <laughs> the the patch is on the chick's P 
pube line. Right. I mean, she's wearing. I'm showing it on yeah. on me, so it's yeah. not as as effective. That's supposed to make me horny. The, the patch it's is is well below the belt line. Yeah. It is. It is basically. Let's say the coos is it. Uh, well, let's see. Straight up noon. Okay. Here's what it would be. The uh, the coos has to be actually the center of the hands of the clock. Okay. It's in the middle of the clock. All right, okay. This patch is over at about two thirty and just about halfway up one of the arms. Right. I mean, it's it's right there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I had to I TiVo the thing. You know, I've watched it like eight times. Like, I mean, that would have been Jack material when I was in high school. Oh yeah. And the chick, all she kept doing on the commercial, she's wearing these little bikini briefs. I mean, it's it's not even like sort of you know panty. You know, I'm on my period panties. I mean, string panties. She's facing the camera and she keeps sliding the material down and showing this patch, which if she didn't groom, you'd catch some pube. <laughs> In the, it would be in the frame. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then she just kept showing it. Like, hey, here's it. Hey, hey. And it's like, uh, all right, now I'm horny. I, I got to buy one of those patches so I could have sex. Like, I, I'm not sure. Or, like, maybe I'll use it. Maybe I'll put the patch on my forehead and beat off. I'll look in the mirror. Pretend it's on your pube patch. Right. And I, did I have to put it down? No. I, did, did, <laughs> it's like... Does uh, does it need to be in the in the uh, Does it need to be so close to the cockpit? No, you know what I'm saying. No, it does not. Does the black box need to be actually inside in the under black, the in the black box. under the pilot seat? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. It could have been on her arm, right? Yeah. She kept saying, "Put it anywhere. Put it here. Put it. Put it here." <laughs> and then it was like, "Or here. Or or here." It, Really, it was like it was the kind of thing though. Like uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm not Squaresville or anything, but like if you were sitting watching TV and your kids were like sitting next to you, and it was like, here's this chick in her panties, and she's oh, she's taking her panties down. She's giving you a look see. You know, it was a move like, you know, you meet that chick who has like that. She has that little uh, little bird tattoo, and it's yeah. in a little naughty place, and right. she's like, eh, 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 and you're like, eh, here you go. That's what it was. Oh, All right, man. so there's where the uh, patch is, everybody. You're right. What, what is the behavior that's supposed to induce? Uh, is it that like we like going to turn chicks yeah. on? Are you going to want to go out and get birth control? With the, with the patch or with the commercial? Or do you need I, to run out and I grab like, a woman I like and to sniff, her? I like to sniff the patch <laughs> while I beat off. I mean, it's not like going to get a hamburger. That's my whole thing. Like, a lot of guys are into soiled panties. Yeah. I'm into soiled patches. Old I like patches. The, yeah, I like Old the, patches. What I'll do is I'll yeah. cruise the sorority. I'll, I'll comb through the dumpster like a raccoon. Oh, yeah. I'll find some of those patches. <laughs> oh, it smells like estrogen. Yeah. P and P's. Yeah. Like Playboys and patches. Though. That's what I like. That's right. They call me patches. And then I and I I make a uh, I make the uh the mark of the devil. I make a pentagram nice. on my chest um, out of those patches. Oh nice. And then I beat off with a pair of soiled nice. panties That's on my nice. head. Okay. A little insights into me. <laughs> now what do those tarantulas eat? Maybe I'll <laughs> no, feed, no, it, I'll feed it a patch. No, what yeah. can you feed them what out of the refrigerator? What can I feed it out of my pantry. refrigerator? Or the it, it, it just as long as it's in my kitchen. Do they eat Doritos? Okay, yeah. there's a question. All right, we'll be back after this. All right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Thank you for calling Loveline. Your call will be answered in the order it seems interesting. Call Loveline. Call Loveline. love one nine one. There you go. The best of love line. Oh, true. The memories. Mm. The times we've shared. Yes. No wonder we've been fallen a good year. in love. Is, you you know, can't so, go through what we've been through and not fall in love. You, you, keep, you, keep, you keep asking. You, that, I, we have told you not to bring this up. You say, do, I, do you love me? Yeah. You're always asking that. And well, you know how that makes me feel. And you give me that, uh, I, I love like, you. Yeah, I like I'm love you. love, love right. with you. And how many times do we have to go through that, really? Until I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. All right. <laughs> what you do, uh, yeah. All right. That's it. That's the best of love line. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Annie Gold. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.